from the local bar <laughs> to the local rink. Getting up early, having an excuse to have an 8 a.m. beer. We find surprising sights. There we go. We are bravely bearing it all. And amazing people doing amazing things. Yeah! And all of them. Shows Cool Colorado. The show will be really good and you will be impressed. I know you will like it. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Ann Herbst. Cool Colorado is about interesting people in our state. Like me, Nelson Garcia. No, no. Oh, and, and you, of course. And you know where the coolest place in Colorado literally is? Yeah, how about a beautiful frozen mountain lake at sunrise, where I'd rather be right now? Yes, exactly. Austin Knox and I show you how pond hockey is more than just a tradition. So last night, we had some slush creep and it shaved some of it down. In between the ice, the skate should go right over it, was the fire. East Troublesome, which burned through part of the town and killed two people in October 2020. We're standing on the middle of Grand Lake, the largest natural lake in Colorado. To cope with the fire, Brian Blumenfeld deals with the ice. One step away from being the plexiglass boards at the Pepsi Center. This is the sixth annual Grand Lake Pond Hockey Classic. All right, thank you so thank much. Thank you. An amateur hockey tournament. You're, you're right here. Drawing people from around the country. We have 50 teams. We sold out in one day. We have 260 players. Getting up early, having an excuse to have an 8 a.m. beer and just get out on the on the water. A little snug with elbow pads yeah, on. Beer. Nice job, boy, Cam. And buddies. <laughs> More of a tailgate party than a sporting event kind of vibe, but also a tailgate party that's not just a tailgate party. It's one that celebrates the sport of hockey. It celebrates the town of Grand Lake and the, the glory of this area. Brian isn't just the founder. He's a player. Box, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah! A player who wants to bring people back. Jeff, throw on the jersey. To the original joy of hockey. Oh! Bring them up, bring them up. Skate on imperfect ice. Lake ice is lake ice. It's not an arena with a Zamboni. Um, lake ice has its own natural quirks, natural cracks as well. The playing surface is much worse on the awesome. pond, but that's Thank part you. of the, the allure of the, the romance behind it. So. The, the bad ice almost levels the playing field for us that actually suck at the game, so. <laughs> Joy. Oh, then you go, then you go. <laughs> and love. What even makes it more special is the very first annual pond hockey tournament that I just kind of started up out of thin air. Um, that very day, I, I, I met my wife, who I married this past May, um, on the ice, wearing hockey skates. He skated up to me and uh, introduced himself and it was love at first sight truly <laughs> like we fell in love in on hockey skates on grand lake which was really special mackenzie brenneman i got some more over here knew what she was getting into with brian every year i mean it's kind of like reliving um the first day we met and that's really special for both of us it's out of the the beauty of this tournament the beauty of this place and uh my wife's also, her whole family's Canadian, and so, you know, I couldn't really think of a more true Canadian romance than that. If I didn't have a fractured jaw, I was coming after you. It's a fun day for him. It's probably something he looks forward to all year, so I like to be part of it. For them, and for the town, hockey brings hope to a place still recovering from the East Troublesome Fire. As big of a tragedy as that was, it didn't come anywhere near to, to, to putting this town down. This town is as good as it ever was and will continue to be as good as it ever can be. Playing hockey this way on this ice brings you really back to the childhood joy of the best game on earth. If you get me on skates, I actually fall with Grace. Now, I legit can't imagine you doing anything with Grace, like, at all. Truth. In this next story, Foster Gaines takes us to a competition that's a little different. This is the largest maintenance celebration event in the country. We're at the uh, 2023 Maintenance Mania competition. Yeah! They are the unsung heroes, and they don't necessarily get the recognition that they deserve. Yeah, so every year we put on competitions and there are seven different competitions that are timed. The events go anywhere from four seconds up to 10 seconds, 12 seconds, you know, depending on how they're done and how they're judged. We're the ones there unclogging toilets. We're the one there fixing smoke detectors. 
we're the ones there that are, when nobody else wants to be there. Hey, doing wrong, man. Yeah, so Greg and them are some of my fellow competitors. They represent Graystar, who's the biggest company in the country right now. Yes, we're part of Team Graystar, which uh, is great. We have a huge team. It's really competitive, but we managed to, uh, as a team, to win this competition several years, which is really cool. My favorite competition this year is the Kitty Smoke Fire Alarm. Uh, it's probably my favorite one this year. Yeah, I'm here to cheer on our guys, yep. Come on, Shane. The water heater installation, it's, they go so fast. Time is a tick in. Yeah, still fast, still fast. We have a bronze, silver, and gold medal for each competition that we do. You know, they set an event up like this for us to do is really, really neat, you know. And they're really giving us an opportunity to show that we're more than just guys behind the scenes fixing things at apartment communities. Coming up next, a unique way to learn a language and a special dance for anyone of any age. Welcome back. Nelson, do you know the best way to learn a foreign language? Hmm. Speak it. Wow, that's super helpful, thanks. Jaleesa Irizarry and Foster Gaines take us out for drinks to a special happy hour. Hello. Hi. How are you tonight? Why someone goes to happy hour is never as important as to where. At Mezcal's restaurant. Yes, good food and drinks. <laughs> Rosa Chavez comes for the cocktails. <laughs> but stays for the connections. It's like my second home. <laughs> because what could feel more like home in a Mexican bar Hola. than a night in Espanol? Hola. <laughs> Every week, this table at Mezcal is reserved for Spanish-speaking happy hour. La semana pasada, tuvimos como 26 personas. De principiantes a nativos. Venga tanta gente que quiera hablar español y aprender, o mejorarse, o nada más practicar. Practice. Yo hablo gringo, muy bueno. <laughs> is what Debbie Eliezer was looking for. Modelo especial. She knows between the libations, there are lessons. ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, flat. Ma mano. Mano, yeah. Sí, mano. Es una, una meta de, de mí a hablar español. Una, una idea. Cuando viajar a otro país es... Omar Angola shares that sentiment. <laughs> sí, ya lo entiendo. Perfectamente. The Venezuelan native has been coming to this happy hour for six years. It's brought new friends <laughs> and a fresh perspective. Que una de las cosas que más me sorprendió de los Mirap en español fue tanto americano queriendo hablar español. O sea, para mí fue como una revelación, porque para, eh, es como la idea de que al americano no le interesa hablar español. Pero definitivamente este, sentía que muchos amaban más el español que yo. Bueno para nosotros. Different languages don't necessarily mean different people. Sí, mucha gente. Because after a few beers, what so many see as a barrier vamos, vamos. becomes a bond. Buenas noches. Hey Nelson, can you speak Spanish? Not really, but I can drink. What is like actually wrong with you? <laughs> Who knows? In our next story, Courtney Yoon teaches us a special dance that anyone can try. <laughs> Being on stage in front of hundreds of people can be intimidating. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think I would do really great. For seven-year-old Ava Dixit Loren, this is my first year. It's her debut performance with Mudra Dance Studio. This is their annual showcase, Utsav 15. I feel like they're gonna see really good dancers. They're gonna be really impressed, and maybe, maybe some of the kids might want to join. Even though she's kind of nervous. As I said, it's a really good community here. Yeah. She knows her teachers and fellow dancers have her back. There's people here, and they always support me. It's a big part of Mudra Dance Studio's mission. Everything that we are about is 
welcoming everybody to our world and to our family. No matter their background, gender, body type, ability, or age. The only requirement that we have for our students is that they be potty trained. Anyone who wants to dance is invited to join. If I had to summarize it in one sentence, it really is to spread love and diversity through dance and music. Aishita Narayani is the program director and a head guru. We are all trained in Kathak and from there, we additionally teach several folk styles of dance. Her mom, Namita Narayani, started teaching dance in her basement 30 years ago. Since then, their community has continued to grow. Part of our mission about diversity and bringing people and cultures together is that we also include drum styles from different cultures. So we've got taiko drums, We all look so beautiful on stage. We put so much effort in that like, everybody can see that. Suhani Da, Serena Rai, and John B. Sejal have been coming to Mudra Dance Studio for years. Feel like it's like a safe space, so you just get to be yourself without any judgment. I learned to help the people around you and how important a community is. Mudra is a big family that is so accepting and loving. A big family that's 80 dancers and 15 drummers strong. And even if I mess up, they're just, they're always going to cheer for me. Tonight's showcase is more than just a sold out dance recital. It's a lot of pride for what we do together and a lot of love for each other. It's about self-expression, community, and celebrating our differences. If you really want to see the show next to you, you really should come because I feel like the show will be really good and you will be impressed. I know you will like it. After the break, a bold celebration of beauty and triumph. Thanks for joining us and welcome back. Remember that grace problem I was talking about? Oh yeah, how could I ever forget that amazing story you told me? Well, Byron Reed has an amazing story about a group of women who have no problem with grace. The final few minutes just before dawn can bring a new perspective on the day. We're going to start at the one that's kind of the furthest away. And for this group, thank you everybody for being here. The start of their day is shedding light on a subject that may make some people feel a little uncomfortable. I was diagnosed in January of 2021. Um, in 2015. I found a knot that was stuck up about the same as my knuckle. I was like, that's not right. Okay. These women are breast cancer survivors who chose to have double mastectomies, a choice they say that wasn't easy, and now they want to help erase a stigma. I know whenever I was making the decision to have a mastectomy to save my life, I went to, um, a plastic surgeon website and looked up what mastectomy reconstruction looked like and I had nightmares. I'm a flatty, that's what we call ourselves. Proud flatty is what I am, you know. And then I will collect your robes. They're participating in an event called the Scars of Beauty Project. Head and take off shoes. A photo shoot that has them bearing their tops so others can understand. We are bravely bearing it all to show what different reconstruction options may look like after breast cancer. Some of these women, they've never taken their shirt off in front of their husband. I want them to feel like they made the right choice for them, like they were in charge of their medical decisions, and I want them to feel confident. There we go. Linnell Keeling is the founder of the group and is also a survivor. She says the goal is to empower other breast cancer survivors and bring awareness to their options. A lot of people, when they're diagnosed, their, their, their cancer team tells them just about breast implants. I want women to feel confident in their decision. I also want other women to be able to see, hey, this is an option. The women say the project is helping them reconnect with their bodies. The body that I have now, post breast cancer and post mastectomy and staying flat, really feels like this was sort of the body I was meant to have. I did not have flat aesthetic closure. I had reconstruction with an implant. So I remember my parents always telling me when I was a kid, if I ever did something like this where I posed and revealed my body, there would be major consequences to pay. And now I see it as such an empowering gesture. The empowerment is just being comfortable within yourself. I thought I was happy before, 
And I thought I loved myself before, but I didn't. Okay, everybody look at me. Linnell hopes the pictures will help others feel more comfortable. Beauty comes from the inside out. And show how these breast cancer survivors are picture perfect. I hope that they, they see the stories behind the women, behind the scars, and know that if they have somebody who's in their life that's diagnosed, that they can say, hey, this is an option. Stay with us for a story about breaking barriers and perceptions on the ice. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations. You made it to the last story and it looks like we're going back on the ice. Duh, this special is called Cool Colorado. Don't ever duh me again. Yeah, you get out of here. This next story is mine. It's about a group that's trying to change the face of hockey. The million dollar views in the Roaring Fork Valley are about the only thing that's affordable around here. Every time I heard Aspen, I just thought of billionaires and all the celebrities coming in to ski. We have fun? Carlos Ross right. moved from the East Coast to coach a different winter sport because the sights are free. Try it again. And so's the hockey. Good job. How do we think we did there, group? Carlos is the director of hockey operations at the Colorado Extreme. Head up, head up, Carter, head up. A new team. Stay low, stay low. Where the sticks, the skates, the ice time don't cost a dime. Oh, good job. He never had anything like this when he was a kid. I don't know which one of these are younger, but it's around the same age. This one's hilarious. <laughs> I grew up in Brockport, New York, up by Buffalo, so it's very cold, a lot of dark winters. Um, so hockey really is a uh, way of life out there. Carlos has played hockey long enough to know it's pricey. Better, better. Which creates a barrier. I think it's very important to do it for free because it gives any family an opportunity to get their kids into hockey. That leaves one more wall to break down. Yo dije, bueno, qué bueno, todavía está Carlos aquí al, a, a, en, en, el, en el valle. No me fui, no me fui. No te fuiste. No. Carlos uses any and every method <laughs> to get the word out. Básicamente se trataba de que tú de alguna manera estabas aquí como para representar y animar a la comunidad latina y lo lograste, Carlos. Sí, sí. ¿Cómo te sientes? Muy, muy, muy feliz, pero quiero más niños latinos jugando. Claro, hockey. por sí. supuesto. Sí. Yeah, pues hockey's got a real big problem with diversity, and I had one uh, African American teammate growing up, but that was until 14, and not one was Mexican or had the name of Carlos or was dark skinned, so. The county where the extreme plays is about 30% Hispanic. But a coach who speaks Spanish was like finding a needle in a hockey stick haystack. Bend your knees. Coach Jay Wolitsky. Bend your knees. Knew they had to hunt. She remembers how it felt to stick out. I don't think I saw anyone who looked like me even until I played in college. It was only when I played Division I where I saw any diversity in hockey. I do think you question yourself, even at, until you get to the highest level, of um, you sometimes feel like you don't belong in this space. Showing kids they belong on skates. I'm gonna push right, left, right, left. Became as important. Okay, get back up. As teaching them how to stay upright. Yes, and that was a big search because there were only three people in the country that had played college hockey and spoke Spanish. Let's skate. One was Carlos. I think Carlos keeps said that once he thought it was a scam. I thought it was a complete joke, a scam. He thought his friends were playing a trick on him, basically. And I texted my buddies asking if they're pranking me or something like that. No joke. The call came from a businessman and hockey lover, Sheldon Wolitsky. Yeah, yeah. He's in it for the game, not the attention. If you talk to my wife, I'm usually the one hiding. <laughs> Sheldon credits his success in business to the sport so much. He's used millions of his own dollars to buy the land, Go! build the rink, and get the gear. I could have easily went in a different direction as a kid, and I, I owe it all to the game of hockey, and it's important for me to, to, to give that back to the kids. Now a year after they started, 
Even the NHL has asked their secret. We invite everyone with open arms. Our personal goal is to get these kids to college, give them an opportunity that they wouldn't have had without the sport. I, it was important for me not to be in the spotlight. The stars are the coaches. Now we're going to have two people. The kids. You get like energized. And their frozen families. I'm not dressing because this is fashionable. <laughs> it's a great uh, uh, opportunity for, for all these little ones, you know, I mean, this is the future of hockey. Until I go on tournament with my kids is, is like, um, there are lots of, a lot of white families. <laughs> when our team go out there, people are like, whoa. <laughs> hey, let's go white. We don't give up, right? We are on every single puck. I think you guys are ready for this challenge. Let's go out there and show it. Keep going, White, keep going. Scratched plexiglass can't hide what happens when the team that's still learning to skate. Help them out, White! Competes. And we want to bring as many cultures and diversity into hockey. For Carlos, it's a win. Just go up to him and stop. Be like, go through me. Even when they're down a point or two. Hey, today our focus is to practice with heart. All practice, right? Let's go. Back home, where pretty much everything costs something. Touch puck, Eli! There's no price tag on the feeling they all get. Go, man, go, man. From go, changing man, the face of hockey. 100% uh, we are changing the way hockey looks right now. Well, that was a lot of fun, and I cut down on all the dad jokes. Yeah, it really didn't seem like it. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us to celebrate cool Colorado. See you next time.